Hello everyone, the Poker Book Club rolls on. This month we have the mathematics of poker. Uh, this was our February book in the book club, so I'm going to talk about it, give you sort of a brief overview, some thoughts on the book uh, if you want to check it out. So this is by Bill Chen and Jared Ankeman, and it came out quite a long time ago before I started playing poker. I think uh, 2006 is the copyright, so it was out a long time before a lot of the modern um, technology we use to get good poker answers. And this book attempt in the book club was a failure. It was a failure. I don't think any of us finished the book. Uh, so the, the schedule was over a month, and the amount of chapters in this book is about 30. So it was about a chapter a day. And I was thinking going into the book, like, okay, uh, it's 300 pages total, 350. You know, it's like we're doing 10 pages. It'll take maybe for this book because it's pretty heavy subject matter. It might take 30 minutes, 40 minutes to go through a chapter uh, as opposed to the typical kind of like 20 minutes of reading um, that is typical for that amount of pages. And uh, well, the experience was very much not that in that one hour uh, per chapter is not really enough with this book. Here, there's two problems. The first problem is that the schedule needs to be elongated. This is a book that takes a lot more time to get through. Um, and the reason that is, is because the subject matter is very, very dense, right? Like there, it is just jam packed with pure mathematics. And if you're a decade out of doing algebra like me, um, you know, it's challenging. Um, so each chapter of this book largely builds on the previous chapter, which is another problem with, if you're not getting something, you're going to run into more problems down the road. So the main structure of mathematics of poker is it's looking at the totality of poker and you're trying to come up with game theory, sort of theoretical answers to questions. Um, and you don't use the game of poker because poker is too big of a game to come up with like precise answers and, you know, mathematically sound answers uh, on a piece of paper with a pencil. But you look at toy games. So you create a scenario, for example, let's say we're on the river and our stack is 100 and our opponent's stack is 100. Uh, and they check to us, and we've got to decide whether we want to bet or check. And let's say that our range of hands contains, um, you know, 50% nuts and 50% bluffs. And our opponent's range has 100% bluff catchers. So they always lose to the nuts, and then they always beat the bluffs. What do we bet? What's our sizing? What percentage of our range bets? Obviously, all the nuts bet, but how many bluffs bet? And what sizing do we choose? And then what does our, our opponent do? We're, we're solving those uh, for those answers, um, and they're described as sort of toy games in the scenario. And so, uh, it's very useful, I think, to essentially understand the mathematical engine that is driving poker decisions, right? At the end of the day, like, you're playing against human beings, uh, and it's not going to be so useful when you're at the table to be sitting there and, like, calculating out, okay, like, what am I going to do with my range here? Like, just give me six minutes, guys. i got to remember this formula. That's not how it's going to work. But I think by practicing this and really theoretically understanding it, uh, the quality of decisions will improve over time. So my plan with this book is to give it another go, but instead of doing it over a month, do it over the course of a year, right? Uh, do one chapter a week, uh, perhaps getting a math tutor, if anyone is uh, sort of in, in math, you know, um, if you take math in university and stuff like that and you want to tutor me through, through some of these, uh, get in touch. I would love to hear from you. Probably one chapter a week and just going through it slowly and really being able to do all of the formulas, be able to practice it and understand it uh, before moving on to the next level, I think is the way to go. Um, so that's going to be my approach. If you're interested in joining the journey uh, on that, reach out and we can, uh, we can do that. Is it worthwhile? Like, I think if you're... If you're anything but a very serious enthusiast or a professional, I would say no, right? Even as a professional, like, I think it feels like for me that my life is about poker. And so to really understand the underpinnings of the game and take on probably the toughest poker book that exists uh, seems like something I should do as a poker professional. Not necessarily because it's going to make me a bunch more money at the table, although I think it will help me, but more so because this is who I am as a person. And so why not uh, try and understand it to the highest level? So that's how I think about it. That's why I'm going to take it on uh, just at a much slower pace. Very challenging book. Um, you know, I'll put an overlay here of a typical sort of page so you can get a sense. I think, you know, if you're a math major or if you are coming fresh out of doing algebra or a lot of math stuff, this will be a lot easier for you if the subject matter is interesting. So, um, 
you know, take that for what it's worth. But yeah, failure in the book club, The Mathematics of Poker by Bill Chen, Jared Enkman. Big thanks to Jared Enkman, who is actually in our Discord, offered a bunch of um, guidance as we ask questions throughout the month to help us through some of the questions. Um, even though we sort of fell off, he was available and approachable and that's super cool of him to have actually an author talking about the book with us. So one more thing before I let you go, one of the concepts that was so interesting to me in this book that I really want to do more of a deep dive on was Bayes theorem, uh, and Bayesian thinking. So the idea of this is, and this is something we encounter in poker all the time, right? We kind of know the baseline of, okay, what are we supposed to raise on the button? Okay, everyone's folded. There's two people left in the blinds. There's us on the button. What are we supposed to raise? We can calculate that answer pretty well. Uh, you can look it up in various sites around the internet. People have done the math, uh, right? Like you just sort of memorize an opening range and you go from there. And we can adjust based on our opponents. If they're playing too tight, we can raise more. If they're playing not tight enough, we can raise less. But let's say in a flip scenario, let's say we're in the big blind, okay? And we see our opponents on the button. They have an opportunity to raise and they fold. Okay, what does that mean? What is that piece of information worth to us? As human beings, we're able to sort of adjust our thinking uh, based on, okay, it's just one chance. They could have been dealt a piece of garbage, so I'm not really going to change my approach. Let's say they do it again. Two times they folded the button, right? This is a position where they're raising over half their hands. Well, what's the likelihood that they're playing too tight now? Um, how much can we adjust mathematically what is the new mathematical baseline based on these two data points that are not very important, but they're, they're not completely irrelevant? That's so interesting to me, right? Like maybe we just adjust our big blind strategy by 1%, but what I don't know as a poker professional is mathematically, where is the new line based on these sort of inconsequential things that I've just seen? Based on these small data points, how much can I weight those to change my strategy? How much can I counter exploit when I see things happening. Uh, and poker seems like a game where you're all the time gathering a bunch of information and you're weighting different variables against the chance of just being dealt garbage or being dealt the nuts. And you're trying to weight it all to make a solid decision. Bayes' theorem, I think, gives you a framework to know where the mathematical line is of how to weight stuff. And as human beings, we could still do better than that, right? We can we can adjust and know that like, hey, old man Bob is not bluffing us here, <laughs> right? Because, uh, because we, we know that, right? Like we just know we have human intuition, etc. But knowing where the line is mathematically when we witness these events, how much we should weight it in a theoretical sense is very interesting. I don't think people are doing that work. And this book has really set me off in my mind of, I'd like to look into that a bit more when it comes to preflop ranges, when it comes to defending ranges, uh, when it comes to C bidding frequencies, etc. How can we adjust? So that's kind of a cool idea from this book. That's it for this one. Next month, we have The Truth Detective by Alex O'Brien and Elements of Poker by Tommy Angelo. Thanks for watching. Till next time, we'll see you later.